So in the last lecture, you might have noticed that I used the arrow syntax on line 5 of appcontent.js when I defined the function. And you might have been asking yourself, why didn't you just do something like this? So I'm going to copy this so I can restore it. Fetch list. And that will work. We can run the program and it will actually do exactly what it did before. But the problem is, let's say we had another function in this. So I'll just call this another function, and I'll define it the standard old style JavaScript way. Inside of this function, fetch list, I have no access to that function, another function. I can't go, for example, uh, just say this dot another function. And up here I write console.log another function. So if I do this and save my code and switch back to my web browser and clear the screen and try fetch data, look at that. This is undefined and it tells me on appcontent.js line 14. If I go back here and look at appcontent.js line 14, right there, I have no access to the this function. But if I restore this to the way that it was before and save it and go back and clear the screen and now I click on it, I actually do call another function. So the problem with defining your functions this way, like another function this way, is that you have no access to the this keyword for the class. And that's going to be a bit of a problem. So when you're writing functions, in your React application, this is the correct syntax to use. All right, so we've used one event so far, and that was the onClick event, and we used that right down here on line 32. But there are many other functions we can use as well. So let's put some other things in here just so that we can see how this works. So I will, before my HR, right up here, I'll just put another HR in. I seem to be really fond of the HRs these days, but there you go. And I'm going to put another element in here. And I'll just put a paragraph. So I'll put in a P. This is some text. Okay? And on this, I'm going to put another handler. And I'll put on this time on mouse enter. And that will be equal to this dot another function. Okay? That's all I'm going to put there. So I'll come back up here to another function and I'll define this the correct way. Just because I can. And I should get in the habit of doing this. There. So I now have this function called another function, which we're going to get rid of before too long. This is just to demonstrate how event handlers work in React. So I'll go back to my application. And we have a new paragraph called this is some text. So I'll clear the JavaScript console and I'll roll over that. And when I roll over it, see how it called another function. I can go back here and I'll create a third function called left paragraph. And that's equal to, using the pointer syntax, console.log left the paragraph. And save this and go back down here and say on mouse leave on mouse leave equals this dot left paragraph. And if I save that and go back to my web browser and clear the JavaScript console and roll into it, if you watch the console, it says another function. And when I leave, it left the paragraph. So there are many, many handlers you can use, or event handlers you can use in React, and I'll provide a complete list in the course resources for this lecture, but this gives you some indication as to how you can add additional functionality to your React application. It's relatively straightforward. And there are different syntaxes for binding things, and we'll be looking at those before too long, but that's enough for this time around.